All right. Welcome, everybody. My name is Andrea, and I'm the Marketing and Communications Officer at Poland European Citizenship. And I'm pleased to welcome you all to this uh, webinar with our wonderful Eva and Rafael, who's going to present um, finding Polish ancestry records and what to do when you're stuck. So just a quick reminder that this webinar is being recorded. And if you want to share this webinar with anybody, at, uh, uh, with friends, family, so you'll be able to share with them. After the webinar, I'll share the video recording with you guys. This is going to be live stream as well on Facebook and it's actually live streamed now. And uh, you'll be able to ask any questions you want. Uh, during the webinar, and we'll try our best to answer all those questions towards the end of this presentation. So let's get started. I'll introduce our wonderful Rafael Starsky. He's Poland senior, senior researcher. Rafael has a master's degree in history from the University of Warsaw. He worked for many years as an archivist for the Institute of National Remembrance, the State Archives in Warsaw, and the Central Archives of the Modern Records. Welcome, Rafael. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. And I also want to introduce Eva Hussein, our moderator for today host. Uh, many of you know Eva, uh, uh, she's the director and founder of Poland, and she's a recognized leader in the fields of translations and European citizenship. She regularly presents and lectures at conferences, universities, and training institutions on the topics of language services, cultural awareness, and history. All right, and now I'm going to pass it on to Eva, who's going to present uh, just give a, a short introduction of Poland, and then we'll start with our topic today. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea. All right, so welcome everyone. And uh, we had 110 registrations for this webinar. So even though it's a public holiday in America, we seem to be very popular. So that's um, excellent. Uh, we're very privileged today to have uh, Rafael speak um, with us and share his knowledge. Um, as Andrea um, has already explained, he is very experienced um, in um, the archival work and um, has done um, lots of research whilst he was working for the Polish government. And um, really today's session, the purpose of today's sessions is to um, show you a few, I don't want to say secrets, but maybe tips of how to look for records. So oftentimes um, we get asked um, about where to find information and documents. And um, I guess there's a bit of a myth that our Polish records are destroyed or they don't exist. And I think for the most part, um, the Polish archives have um, excellent um, records um, keeping um, approach, um, I guess you could call it that. Um, and in our work, we don't ever give up. Um, I think that's the best way to describe it. So the archives um, that are available online, uh, there are some. Most archives in Poland um, do have to be um, contacted in writing. Um, sometimes we go to reading rooms and um, sit there painstakingly um, with the actual books um, of, of, of the records that we have access to. And um, the way we work is we find um, documentation to prove people's eligibility for, for our Polish citizenship, essentially. So today's webinar, um, here's a brief overview of what we're going to be covering. And Rafael will share with us um, his knowledge of how the arch archives actually work. Um, some tips and tricks of how to find your ancestral records and how to make an, a request to the archive because it's not as simple as writing an email um, in English, you know, to the archives. Um, I'm going to hand over to Rafael now to, to explain to us um, what are the Polish state, state archives and um, how do they work. Um, thank you. Over to you, Rafael. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Eva. Thank you, Alondra. Uh, thank you for the invitation. It looks this is the first webinar when I be a um, um, uh, speaker. And thank you for all everyone who joined today. It uh, looks that you'll be very interesting in every part of making the future research in the Polish archives, which especially for foreigners, it looks to be very complicated to maintain the contact with the Polish archives, start work. A lot of people have a plan of questions and I completely I, I uh, definitely realize how many obstacles you can imagine in the uh, in maintaining contacts with the uh, pub, uh, Polish uh, public institutions which the state archives in fact are so today um, I'm going to um, uh, yes the webinar will take uh, about one hour and uh, definitely it's an, not enough time to explain about everything so I'm going to focus on the main topics about the state archives telling you a little more about its structure maybe some other thing about some differences uh, between the Polish institutions and something which you experienced uh, from your countries then of course I'm uh, I'm willing to tell you a little more about the um, uh, records what type of records they preserve about the Polish regulations uh, but mostly of course uh, what tools including online tools we can use to making for example our own research before making any contacts with the archives or if we are willing to do these contacts with the archives uh, what paths we have to use and what type of the correspondence we need to prepare um, uh, to start it so um, uh, I hope also that uh, I, when I uh, end this part of my uh, speech and um, presentation uh, we can find some minutes for uh, a Q&A panel and uh, if there be anything uh, else I will uh, I could add to to today meeting of course I'll be very happy to do this so let's just start it. the Polish state archives oh yes today we'll be talking only about the Polish state archives not the other archives which also we have uh, the private archives church archives university archives there are plenty of archives today we're going to focus on the Polish state archives which by the way they are the most one of the most important because the number of the records we can find there are in millions so this is really really huge what exactly are the polish state archives so as you see um the polish state archives was established over 200 years ago in fact the first polish archive uh however since 1919 exactly we can say that uh the Polish state archives were became well organized and they became uh, a part of the uh, public sector and uh, what exactly you can find in the Polish archives uh, and what is their uh, status what is the role they gather preserve and make available historical sources from the oldest period so early medieval up to the modern times and um, uh, the historical materials preserved in the Polish archives are different manuscripts printing records maps photos audio records and movies and that could be more so Andrea, could you can I ask you to uh, uh, scroll to the next page? So this is a map which uh, allowed me to tell you and explain a little more about the structure of the Polish archives. The most important, probably, or maybe the um, office which control the web of the Polish archives is a uh, head of the National Archives, which uh, with this location in the capital city of. Warsaw. Then we have three central archives also located in Warsaw. The first central archives of historical records located nearby the old town of Warsaw. Uh, this is the um, archive which holds the most important historical records uh, from medieval up to 1918. Then we have central archives of the modern records, uh, and this archive holds the records created by the central authorities, institutions, uh, uh, associations uh, of the nationwide character, uh, but after 1980. So mostly the records made in 20th century. And the third archive of the central character is a national digital archive. And in this archive, usually 
we are looking for uh, uh, all types of the um, um, digital audio or video um, files since beginning of 20th uh, century. So what next? There is also then regional archives uh, and exactly 30 regional archives located in all Poland. Archives with the original character, which also most of them has their own branches. Number of the branches will could be different. One of the archives could have the one branches, while for example, the state archive of Warsaw has a five branches. So in the total numbers, in fact, of the Polish ar state archives is about 80. And what type of the records we can find in the original archives? They hold all documents for the history of the regions, in fact. Um, uh, and they are, very, of course, very, very important. Most of the people who are willing to find, for example, the ancestors, usually they try they making the first contact with the regional archives. But I, oh, I'm going to try explain uh, about this uh, just a little after. So just the next page, please, Andrea. Uh, the types of the records stored in the Polish state archives are uh, different. First of all, uh, first of all, the Polish state archives were created uh, to hold the um, uh, documents of the historical value. Some value of the historical documents could be very, very important, especially because they are recorded they come in the Polish history. That type of the sources created by the kings and the chancellors, local and public authorities, court institutions, schools, industrial facilities, uh, religious um, uh, communities, um, social associations, or even um, private collections uh, created by the uh, various uh, people. All these type documents should be preserved in the state um, uh, archives. And uh, of course, depending on uh, usually a place or the time when they've been created, they could be found in the different archives, which uh, I mentioned before. So the plenty of the records has also have also uh, their digital form right now and very often we can use a very special um, uh, online tools like the websites and the main websites which operate uh, which where, where, where the state archives of, uh, uh, can operate is the search in archives uh, this is the, of course um, uh, the inter address the polish address but as you see uh, on the screen if you uh, enter to the search in archives, you can choose uh, different languages, which uh, they're going to help you navigate uh, on this website. Uh, about the search in archives, uh, I'm going to tell you uh, after presentation or with the end of the presentation. And if it will be possible, and today, Andrea, if I get an access, of course, then maybe uh, we can try to um, uh, give some of the examples how to use the website. Okay. And the next one, please. Also, it's worth to mention that um, uh, in the state archives, um, several years ago, uh, the state archives in Poland started to collect, uh, gather from the public institution efforts, because uh, currently, whenever we're going to the any public office, and no matter if it's a ministry or the public registry office, or voivodeship, uh, uh, most of their cases has only have only a digital form. So it's very uh, important to collect the materials from the public institutions from their digital form. And this is why how this, uh, the Polish State Archives created a new system, which exactly help uh, arch archiving and sharing a files um, from public institutions. So um, honestly, everyone can be a user. And uh, the first important rule in the Polish, uh, whenever we do any research in the Polish archives is that uh, according to the Polish regulation, access to the historical materials is free for everyone. 
I say, of course, access, which means that is, uh, and which is based, of course, on the uh, archive regulation. Everyone could go, for example, to the archive and ask for the historical material on their need. Um, um, uh, but there is, of course, some of the important rules. Uh, a lot of people are willing to contact the state archives, especially uh, uh, because they want to get um, an official confirmation uh, of the document. Okay, the document should be authorized. So the state archives can do an official confirmation of the content from preserved historical records by two methods, an authenticated copy with its original language or secondary document or certificate showing the contents of the particular document. And now this is- So uh, Rafa, it, can, it, can I just stop you there? So in other words, what we're saying here, is when you make a request to the archives, they can either give you a certified copy of, of the actual book or they can do a transcription of what's there. Yeah, is, is that fair, fair to say? Yes, okay. but and us... usually, usually uh, most common uh, is the first uh, method Then the archive uh, will give you just a copy with a stamp, okay? It's very rare, in fact, that an archive will give you a, a certificate ex or extract from the document, especially, for example, if you are willing uh, to get, a, uh, let's say, document written in Latin language. In fact, yeah, they, are, they, or, or they will tell you only yeah. they can give you a, a copy of this document with all authentication. So all the stamps and information from about the source where, from where it uh, has come. But important this is very important for everyone if we're, especially if we're talking uh, about uh, uh, our request for getting an uh, authenticated copy that this could be possible usually when uh, whenever you use it can prove his legal interest is basic on the polish regulation okay because for let's say that we are, are willing to uh, confirm our citizenship so we have a legal interest or we if whenever we need to uh, get some of the records from the archive to send them next for example to the court we have a legal interest but for example if our interest is only a genealogy because we want to learn a little more about our uh, ancestors, about our forefathers. It's not exactly a legal interest. We can get an access to the records, but it doesn't mean that we can get a copies uh, with uh, government stamps. Okay, so mm -hmm. usually it's, it's, it's based, of course, in the regulation. But uh, if, uh, in fact, it's not a problem if we are so determined to have an authentic, authenticated copy. And I'm telling you this from my experience after uh, working over 10 years in the state archives, that even if genealogies are our main uh, uh, purpose for making the research in the archives, we can in fact tell archive about everything, which in fact could be the same legal interest, okay. But another important information is especially for those who are not EU citizens, because uh, there are some of the obstacles according the um, uh, Polish regulation, uh, especially for delivering documents. Uh, usually the out, uh, authenticated documents from the archives could be delivered only to the countries in European Union. So for all those who are not EU citizens, it's better to have or their representatives or just only a person or maybe sh only showing the archive a place in the European Union to deliver the correspondence. It sounds a little crazy, but uh, I think that from last time I checked the regulation, uh, nothing uh, was changed, okay? So yes, it's a little, a little more difficult for the people from United States, Israel, Australia, but uh, it's not, of course, impossible uh, to get Okay, this. so, uh, so uh, just to summarize, sorry, sorry Rafa, to interrupt you there. Um, when we request the records, um, because of Poland's history over time, some records may be uh, created in Latin, Russian, mm -hmm. or German, um, some are in Polish, 
And for that reason, the archives cannot necessarily give you a transcript or, or today's version of the document. So what they do is they take a certified copy of the actual book uh, of, say, marriages or death or birth. Mm -hmm. But they do send you a cover letter in which they explain what the record, record contains. Um, mm -hmm. In Poland, um, as is part of, you know, the country is part of the EU, um, GDPR regulations apply. So what I was going to ask you, uh, Rafael, now is how old would the documents have to be for us to request them? So what I mean by that is, are there any time limitations relating to records and how we can acquire them? Usually, yeah, if we are talking about any request sending in our legal interest, usually, yes, it should be time limit for archives, and it's a, a, a maximum 30 days. Unfortunately, and it happens very often, some of the archives uh, try to extend this um, uh, period of awaiting for any reply from the archives. And unfortunately, which is uh, incorrect and against uh, the regulation, um, uh, but uh, sometimes we can expect definitely longer. But usually it depends on the archives and especially last years, uh, it happened frequently, but of course, mostly and officially it was caused by the COVID-19, okay? And whenever I send any request, and after getting the reply, but after three, four months, and the request was an official to the archives, they uh, told that because of the COVID, they couldn't work exactly how they do usually. Yes, the work in the archive, because the, the state archives is a part of the public sector, okay? Status of the state archives could be very similar to the public registry office or the voivodeship office, but in the other hand, uh, work in the state archives, what the archivists do, an archivist is also um, a public clerk, okay, but the uh, scope of the work, what they do is completely different. The research, everything, uh, what they do sometimes needs a lot of time, okay, or even uh, getting uh, uh, sometimes a really complicated access, especially to the old types of the records, which there are uh, um, uh, the books uh, and uh, some of the books uh, and the quality of the books uh, is very poor. And very often, whenever they start to do any research, it requires, for example, uh, first a process uh, for um, uh, securing this book, make some of the uh, conservation work before they start to work with the uh, with the files uh, and then so so yes it's uh, it's uh, it's a little different uh, technically after 30 days they should send you any reply telling for example that because of some of the reasons okay we can't give you now uh, a copy of this document or we couldn't find the information or data you requested we need the more time they should inform us about this. Okay. Uh, so the archives the really have 30, is... 30 days to reply. And yes. in terms of the time limits of the documents themselves. So, um, you know, when can somebody get access to a document um, if they don't have a legal interest, let's say? What's the time period for a birth certificate, for a marriage certificate, for a death certificate? If, if, if person requested for a vital record, but he wanted uh, uh, the record with uh, the stamp with authentication and has no legal interest, then the archive uh, reply that person to uh, um, uh, send a new, uh, for example, form or a new request or the field. Sorry, so just to, just to make it clear, what, what I'm talking about, Rafa, is a hundred years for a birth certificate, eighty years for a marriage certificate. Ah, you, okay, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're asking, okay, okay. So, sorry, because I, yes, this is uh, the vital record. Of course, yes. According the uh, um, uh, the archive regulation, uh, access to the historical records is for everyone. However, some of the records, even if they are in the state archives, still could have some of the limit of. Uh, being available for the people. For example, uh, according to Polish law, birth certificates should be available after 100 years. Sometimes happens, however, that the records, birth certificates, could be 
transfer to the state archives before that time, so before 100 years. And then so they typically sit with the registry office. So if somebody is born in Poland, it's the it same like in the, in the this, that because the person in that was time, born, it'll be at the registry to, office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because in that case, works exactly the re regulation uh, like in the real public registry office, not the archival regulation. And the same we can use in, for example, in the public registry office. If we're asking the public registry office about the birth certificates, which is older than 100 years, and mm -hmm. still is in a public registry office, not in the state archives, they should uh, show you, give you uh, this record without asking, because archival regulation allowed this, okay? It works, in fact, in both of, this, uh, of that institutions. Marriage, death certificates, of course, eight years, uh, 80. Mm -hmm. 80, yes. Um, okay. Book of the people, uh, people evidence, uh, I think it was. Uh, uh, I'm. Uh, I think it was seventy years. So, for example, because there's uh, some of the other historical sources in the state archives, like for mm -hmm. example, book of the permanent residents and for the uh, dad books who once were opened in the nineteenth century, usually should be. Um, um, uh, uh, they should be available in the reading room in the archives. However, some of the books, who, for example, they were opened. Uh, after 1930, they should be available, but some of the entries in this book were after Second World War, and officially, for example, that the book was closed, for example, in 1950, 1970, so technically, they can't you show you this book. Because and, it's, they're less than 80 years, yeah. yeah. Yes, okay. exactly, and okay. and if... And if uh, 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 anything what, what we can do is to send an official request to the archive to make by the archivist research in this book of course because of course they have a full access and they okay. will give you information if you are looking for our, right. for example one of our family in this book we can ask the archive okay because yes sometimes to some of the records uh, access could be limited Okay, and you do say on this slide, um, Rafael, that um, using the historical documents stored in the archives is free, uh, but some of the archives, archival services are payable. Can you explain to us what, what that means? So are they free or do we need to pay for it? And what, what happens in, you know, in practice? If, you are, if we are willing to uh, visit personally state archive, go to lecture room, of course, mm -hmm. we won't pay for anything. But what about the people who are living in a completely another town? They have a problem to get to the archive, or, or even in other country, okay? So, and they can't exactly go to the archive. If you're asking for a simple, if we have a simple request and we are giving archives a lot of information or data about the documents we're willing to find, okay? And the um, searching is not complicated, the probably archive won't charge us but if we are we don't have a lot of uh precise information but we are so determined to get any record so for example let's say we believe that our great-grandparents get married in the town of radon right but we don't know exactly what year it was or we don't know exactly what parish it was so we're asking the archive to start their own research. So finding information and data by data by archivist, which usually should take more than hour or two or three of their research is a something which is regulated by their price list. Okay, how much it could cost? Usually not very much, for, so, so much. For example, one hour of research depending on each archive, because the price is on in every archive could be a little different, should cost between uh, 50 to 60 Polish zloty per one hour of research by the archives. Some of the archives, uh, archives uh, uh, even have, uh, uh, they start uh, counting by the half hour of this research okay so uh, um, uh, but sometimes of course if we are sending you know the archives a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, letters 
our request is for gathering a plenty of documents and we are uh, they have to really want to do a huge work uh, by exploring uh, their holdings. So um, uh, the cost, of course, may be definitely goes up. Yeah. Bigger. Okay. Yes. But, but typically, other... um, typically, sorry, when, when we make a request to the archives, we, we usually write them a letter. So it's a physical letter, a hard copy letter. They don't reply to emails. So what, what happens with that? Can you just briefly oh. tell us? Yeah, every method is good. And so we can send traditional letter to the archive. Uh, we can send an email or we can use a special uh, online government pl platform, ePUAP. But this option mm -hmm. is only for the people who are, in fact, they are a Polish citizens and they have, a, for example, PESEL number. So, um, uh, so uh, and, uh, uh, one, uh, but one uh, important thing, some of the archives, uh, 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 will require a traditional letter from the user whenever they want to get an authenticated document. So email sometimes may be not enough because uh, it's also is basing on a little unclear but uh, um, a point from the one of the Polish regulation. And uh, in fact, some of, if, uh, with the uh, contact with some of the Polish archives, email is enough. But with the others, they were uh, asking you to send a traditional letter for getting, but only for getting uh, a copy with the government stamp. If you're, for example, trying to contact with the archives only for general reason, reason email is enough okay and there's no need to uh send a traditional letter and are they pretty responsive the archives or um it, it varies from archive to archive so, 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 sorry I, I, are they I, uh, are the archives quite responsive or are they a bit uh, slow to yes reply to yes emails? yes 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 usually it's uh, it's uh uh, I can, of course, I can't tell you exactly about. Uh, I had a, you know, experience almost with every Polish archive, okay, and uh, with some of them, their cooperation was very good, while with some others, um, maybe not exactly, okay. But usually, yes, yes, it's uh, okay. It's okay. And okay. Um, here on this slide, we're talking this, about, about archival just groups. On the, on, Yep. Yes, mm -hmm. just only to resume uh, one more thing I want to add. Um, uh, this is also a very important rule. And according to territorial affiliation, all documents created in particular regions should be preserved in the nearest state archive, which means are we, whenever we are looking for a document made somewhere nearby the city of Poznan, for example, then we are sending uh, our request to the Poznan archive or maybe one of their branches in Piwa or Konik. We are not go going to do this uh, with them. Uh, for example, we don't do this uh, uh, the same with the, uh, for example, uh, state archive uh, in Warsaw or the central archive of the modern records. But it's a... Uh, uh, that will be too easy. Uh, sometimes situation may be very complicated. And uh, personally, I've experienced uh, some of the situation that believing, for example, that uh, to find some of the important for me historical records in one of the regional archive, I couldn't find it. And in the same way, after my deepest research in the databases and the evidence of the other archives, I found this the same document in completely different archive. So, for example, uh, once I was trying to find uh, um, a, a document from 1868, uh, it was franchise table uh, for uh, uh, an owners of the properties, um, uh, persons. Uh, they were members of my family. And uh, I believe that time it will it should be located in the Schultze archive, but I found it in a completely different collection in the uh, state archive in Lublin, which is located over two hundred kilometers from there. Why it was hap uh, how it's possible that 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 could happen? Uh, uh, it's it's not only one answer. And uh, uh, history of Poland is complicated. At the same time. Uh, uh, 
history of the archives or the history of migration of the documents could also be complicated okay so um uh, uh, so sometimes we can meet a situation then we can't find a document a proper document in one archive but it doesn't mean that this document uh, don't exist still if uh, if we are experienced researchers we can try to extend this research for the other archives and to be sure for example for example that the document is not here but but usually of course that territorial that territorial affiliation of course is uh, one of the most important rule okay so birth certificates from warsaw should be in the state archives in warsaw okay Book of the People residents from Radom should be in Rad. Okay, mortgage of the um, proper from the properties uh, from uh, Poznan should be in Poznan. Usually, okay. usually, okay. So, yes. Okay, and so, um, here, here we have uh, archival groups, which are maps, uh, posters, manuscripts, and mm -hmm. archival units, which are parchments or paper documents, books, albums, photos, and maps. What is the difference? Just briefly, Rafael, please. <laughs> I can't tell you briefly because this now we are going to something which is, you know, we're talking about uh, something which is uh, familiar to the archivist or historian, but not exactly for a common people, okay? What is exactly uh, in the Polish archive the meaning of group unions or the reference code, okay? What is exactly means, okay? In a short, okay, um, maybe um, so. Maybe that it would be easier, Andrea, if we um, uh, scroll to the next page, okay. Uh, maybe next one. Uh, I want to show you. Um, uh, oh, the structure. Yes, uh, that that multiple structure exactly shows you. It's at the first. Yeah, it looks complicated maybe but doesn't look uh, uh, so bad i'm going to explain you exactly what uh, every term uh, means so let's start in the archive i just exactly uh, made a note because it will be a little more reading this time so archive in a short few sentences is an institution that stores material it may include of course every uh, archive uh, we mentioned today including the central archives or regional archives and their branches okay and uh, each of this archive has um, uh, has assignated a separated number this is important uh, when we will be talking about the archive evidence and if we when we will be talking about the reference code uh, founding in the, for example on the websites on the search in archive so of course archive is an institute which stores the materials okay and uh, from the various creators what so what's next zespo which means fonts so it's exactly creator creator institution of a person who produced the material it may be a for example office it may be the ministry but also it could be a private person it could be a school you name it they got it okay uh they also have some um uh, fonts which um uh, the creator could be um uh, unclear okay we don't know for example who created this document okay so in that time uh, uh, uh we name it in the polish archive we name it as a collection for example, very very often uh, uh, every collection has very similar materials. Material, for example, collection of the World War II photographs. Okay, so we know that the the documents are very similar because they were created from the uh, same period, maybe by, uh, by the same author. Okay, or uh, what exactly we want to find in the records uh, uh, is exactly uh, the same topic. Okay, but then we have a series, and the series is a group of uh, units arranged according to the specific criteria. As far as office concerned, uh, this may be, for example uh their individual departments for example we are uh, we found a ministry of the foreign affairs okay and minister of, uh, of foreign affairs is divided into the, it has a series because the ministry had a number of departments so in a polish archives 
each group of the documents could be placed exactly in the series. This is exactly the reference code, but before I will explain what is here, okay, please uh, go back and draw out the previous uh, screen. Uh, uh, the most important, usually, for our researchers is to find uni in Noska because it's a single physically distinct piece of material contained um, in the an archive. It could be a folder book, it could be collection photograph, album. It has, a, of course, it has a different forms. Important is that a, um, a unit is exactly what afterwards we'll be looking for okay the most uh, unit also usually is uh, uh, being made available in the uh, reading rooms whenever we're asking for any files okay so for example we're going to the archives and they're asking what type of the records we are looking for and afterwards we should write for example the number of the or the name of the font sometimes serious some of the fonts don't have series, but some, of course, uh, uh, they have it, and the number of the unit. Unit usually is the basic uh, model of the evidence in the Polish archives. It's very important, and uh, it will be great whenever um, uh, you work with the Polish archives uh, to record uh, exactly a unit which we want to order from the archives. The problem is that usually we don't know the number of the unit. It requires a little deeper research. But of course, this is a structure. Item is not very important. Sometimes archivists use some of the in extra in evidence um, um, to, I don't know, uh, describe uh, individual uh, part of the unit. It could be very, for example, important object. So uh, uh, it is says uh, like the item, but usually we are not looking at the last one. Okay, so now we can go to the next screen, the reference code. This is the, exactly the, fir the first number. It looks complicated, but in fact, it's not really complicated. First, and of course, this is a random um, uh, random code. Uh, the first number is the archive number. So archive where the documents are stored. And each archive, starting from the archive of uh, uh, the central archive of the uh, old record, or the historical record has uh, its own number. For example, number 53 belongs to the state archive in Poznan. So the second number, 5435-0, is the font's number. So this is the number of creator, number of the institute, okay? It's number of the person who created materials, okay? Uh, so in Polish archives, we call them Zespo, sometimes Zbior. So, for example, this is a foundation for 750th uh, anniversary of location of the city of Poznan. Okay, so this is a number which shows us exactly um, uh, uh, the fonts. Uh, the next number is a uh, series. So, here, for example, uh, number seven in that font uh, in Sirius, uh, it's uh, it belonged to part of Sirius core documentation of projects. And the next number one, three, five is exactly a unit number. This is exactly the basic, um, uh, usually single folder file uh, or book, which uh, we order every time um, in the archive. So for example, this uh, Prolandia days that I choose uh, in a random, and this is exactly a reference code we can find in the search in archives. And if we have a reference code, ordering any files, could be very easy because we have exactly a number evidence. But usually, if we are using, and usually most of the users don't know the reference code, okay? We can find reference code after making research in the archive evidence. And the archive evidence, okay, is among others uh, available on the search uh, in archives website. So let's go next. Oh, 
And now this is very something we definitely uh, inform you before uh, uh, attempting uh, to the Polish archives or uh, using the records or if we are trying, for example, start our um, uh, travel, our uh, journey with the Polish archives. Okay, the first is that not all records have been scanned, but more and more is being added every year. Yes, it's true. First of all, the um, a mass program of scanning documents started about 10 years ago, but the priority were given, first of all, the vital records, because they were being the most popular, especially among the genealogists, okay? And the most of them now, they are published with their digital forms in the search in archives. But also there are other groups of the historical records of the great historical value, which also are available online. For example, one of the greatest collection from the State Archive in Warsaw, um, Bureau of the Warsaw Reconstruction, the files which they are now a part of the UNESCO heritage, uh, there are over 40,000 40, units of um, uh, of this group of this uh, uh, from this fund but only uh, less than 100 units of this uh, from this uh, uh, creator got a scanned forms uh, and of course there is a program to add more scans to the um, uh, uh, search in archives website uh, to their hard drives, but uh, unfortunately, that it will be very, very long uh, progress. Anyway, it's really worth uh, to check frequently the search and archives website because sometimes we could be really surprised that within uh, weeks or months they add something new especially um, and this is the second uh, tip as the relevant archive for more information some scans are not available due to the leg legal re registrations this is exactly Eva what we have been talking about a little before but also it's sometimes worth or call or write archive and ask them uh, what is the expected time of uh, placing a new scans, for example, from the new folders, from the new years of the, for example, vital records, which we know at the time they are in the state archives, but still don't have their digital forms available online. It's very, uh, it's really worth just as the archive because they usually know they will tell you, uh, not this time, but for example, after three, four months, they should be available on the search and archives. So uh, let's stay in touch, uh, stay tuned and check, uh, check uh, the information also on their websites. Right now, the And Rafa, refer... speaking, speaking of the website, yes. is it something you can show us? Can you share, um, share your screen and show us the actual um, website? Yes, exactly. This is exactly what I wanted to do. Okay, Wonderful. after finish uh, finish presentation. Okay, because uh, I think this is uh, the last slide, and I think is, we've got about ten minutes only a theory, to go. So okay, I'm quite keen to, it's yeah, worth I'm quite keen to show, to... show everyone how yeah. do how archivists could work with the uh, online tools, and mm -hmm. for example, what is the easiest way or to get some to the sum of the information. Okay. So um, uh, uh, the last one, you can order record directly to the reading room uh, um, via search in archive. Yes, because the uh, government website also after, especially after you create your own account, uh, will give you some of the uh, extra possibilities. For example, uh, sometimes now if we are using a search in archive website, it's a little like we could be in the reading room. So we use the website, we are looking on the evidence in the archive, we're choosing some of the object and we requested them to send us, for example, a scan with a high quality. So it's a very useful tool right now. Okay, so uh, is it possible, Andrea, uh, to share a screen uh, from the website, okay? You you Will can probably possible? share the screen yourself. Yeah, you, yes. you, you can. Okay. You can do that, so yeah. just yeah, hold you on. You can share your screen. All Thank right. You. All right. So hold on a second. 
Uh, can you see the screen? We yes. can, yes. Yes, as it looks, I can work. So, okay. So just, uh, you can choose the language which you want, okay. But this is important. The language you choose will work, of course, on the main websites or uh, subfolders on the website. And uh, of course, you will find a translation of uh, every field, but it doesn't work on the archive evidence, which what, uh, what exactly uh, I mean. Uh, we are trying to write some of the, for example, uh, city hall of Poznan. We're writing uh, Akta Miasta Poznan. Okay, we can say we can write it in English. It doesn't have exactly the its possibility uh, to make a very advanced research in English language, for example, or Deutsch or Russian. So advanced research could be made only in Polish language. But I, I'm going to try uh, uh, to show you uh, how exactly it works. So first of all, this I think this is very important. The searching archive, and this is my. It's my opinion, but my, maybe not only mine. It's a very useful tool, but especially for someone who has experience with the archives, with the research, okay? In my opinion, it was created especially for experienced research because probably a, a, a lot of people, some of you probably got experience with ancestry.com, for example, their browsers, okay? And you try to find, for example, your ancestors. The same like a family search, okay? And these sites are very good for making even a simple research by putting a name on the surname of the person. Search in archives, this uh, website uh, doesn't work exactly the same. It's completely different, okay? This is exactly why I try to explain a little about the structures of the archives and the evidence uh, to make it, uh, uh, it a little clear how this is work. But first is a very good information for every research, even for the person who first time is entering to the website. Just about three months ago, uh, the search, uh, the head of the National Archives add a new option for the researchers, and this is exactly search vital records. Honestly, 90% of the documents we are looking in the archives, we are searching, making, we are making research in the archives, forgetting information about our forefathers, they are, uh, they are basing on the vital records. And before that update, it was more difficult to find it. Now, if we're putting this entering here, of course, yeah, this is a problem with the search in archives. Sometimes it doesn't work fast. And the problem continues since I remember. Okay, so what do we have here? information of location, voivodeship until 1998, confession, church name, if uh, if happens, dates, fonts number, it's exactly, it refers to the uh, reference code, among others I showed you before, and scans if there existed. Let's say that someone is looking for the uh, great grandparents who were born in a radom, for example. We're placing a radom here in that field and what do we have a number of the uh, uh, groups fonts number as you see the uh, number of the archive everyone everywhere almost everywhere is the number of 58 which means this is the state archive in radom okay and uh, confession. So we have a Roman Catholics, we have a Protestants, we have a Russian Orthodox, we also have a Jew. 
and look at yes and lo location of course this is the place where we we start our looking we've been interesting about the city exactly or the um, uh, uh, area uh, for example of the parish or uh, religious district so this is a random show is exactly and we can start make a research okay in Roman Catholics, of course, that will be a little more because Radom had a few parishes, okay? And also this is a public registry office in Radom for uh, searching for uh, people of the Jewish origin. We have to search, for example, these two, uh, uh, this, uh, two groups. For the Protestants, for example, this is the first option. Okay, so let's say that we're willing our uh, ancestor was a Jew and he was born about 1870. We're going here and we have a description. This description and take a look here. Yes, as I said, uh, the translation is only for, uh, it's ending somewhere, okay? For example, if you want to learn about the content of every creator, it won't be translated to the English language. History of the creator also, this is only in Polish language. We have series. We can start searching by the series. And from the series, we see the vital books, annexes, and you, uh, original books or uh, universe, but this one has no scans. For example, the first option, the first series is important for us. Then we'll be looking for the border date. We can also use, uh, for example, we can use uh, the filter. And we have to wait. Sometimes uh, it's worth to refresh this website, unfortunately, or just uh, put something here, oh, as you see. The filter uh, canceled our operation, but yes, here, for example, we have a book, the Jewish vital records from 1870 to 1871. So, or that's this one. So in one of these two books, we believe to find our uh, birth certificate. So it has a scans, of course. And now this is the biggest problem because it's not like in ancestry where we can put the name of the person and we exactly can get a scan of the document. Here, now the real research will start because here we can only find the scans from the book Oh, this is, was they were exactly scans from the microfilm, but still we don't know on which page exactly is the proper record we are looking for. Okay, so we can make this in two ways. The longer way is to check every page by page to see is there any information about the person we are looking for. But the people who know a little more about uh, uh, um, how the creator of the records, uh, uh, how they wrote the books, that probably we could learn that each of the book or most of them should have the table of contents or the name index. So we are trying, for example, to search first the name index and from the name index, uh, uh, we should get exactly a number of the record. And it will be uh, a little easier to find uh, this information. Sometimes, unfortunately, happened that there is a no name index. So we have to search page by page. But there's another help for the vital records. If you are sta uh, starting our uh, research uh, in the Polish archives, we can try to use some of the private sites uh, who uh, are
are belonged to the different uh, genealogy societies. Usually, they could be divided on the regions, or even this is uh, this is one of the website which uh, technically uh, has uh, uh, has a lot have a uh, has a lot of indexes from every part of the Poland. But unfortunately, it's uh, this one is incomplete. Uh, maybe another. There is no website or browser in the Polish uh, on the Polish website where you can get a hundred percent chance to find uh, any information about the people. Sometimes you could be lucky. Sometimes, unfortunately, not. Okay. So if there Rafa, is no we have we have run out of time. I'm I'm, I'm very sorry to have to interrupt you. Yes. But it's been a fascinating journey through the archives. We are going to be running these webinars once a month, and we will tap into your wisdom and knowledge, um, just like you shared with shared it with us today. Um, but the session is about to end, mm -hmm. and what I would like to encourage everyone to do is contact us via email or Facebook or any other way you wish to. Um, so that if you need any specific assistance with um, looking for, you know, through the archives, we can we can definitely help. And if it is that um, your research is for um, the purpose of Polish citizenship, you can email me directly. Um, we'll um, send you uh, first the recording of the session and a set of information linking you to the archives. But for now, I wanted to thank everybody uh, for their time, uh, for all of those those of you that attended but especially to Rafael for um, sharing your knowledge and um, shedding some light on how, how the archives in Poland work. Thank you very much, everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you to Eva. Thank you, Andrea, for invitation. Of course, I hope next time to um, complete all the information. But of course, we have a lot of uh, new topics on the next webinar. So uh, I hope also that you join us next time. Truly appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a good Bye -bye. day. Bye-bye.